Hey guys, and welcome back to Idle On. And today I'm going to be trying to upgrade my pendant slot for like the first time in like literally 70 levels on my Barbarian because I've been using the Sleek Shank for a long, long time. And really, there weren't that many options, especially at the lower levels between like the Sleek, Sh Sleek Shank and there's the, uh, the Carrot one and then... I don't know, there might be one other possibility, but there aren't too many possibilities for things that you can really use in that slot. So Sleek Shank kind of ends up uh, dominating a lot of the time. So basically I'm going to be trying to do the Chaotic Amarok pendant that you can get from that because uh, the requirements for it, I realized are actually really easy once you can actually beat cha Chaotic Amarok because it's literally just, you need the slabs, like that's it. And then it's a couple other easy materials. I think it's like distilled water and regular Amarok slabs, which are, you're, bar you're already gonna have those by the time you can defeat uh, Chaotic Amarok. So basically it's just like defeat Chaotic Amarok a couple of times and then you can make one of those pendants. So I'm gonna be doing that because um, it has plus 12 wisdom on it, which seems like a pretty nice stat to have. So we're going to be going for that. I know the Sleek Shank does have, it might have more defense, but honestly, the accuracy tends to become a bigger deal. I've kind of felt like the defense is a big deal in World 3, but I'm starting to feel like my defense is in a better spot and my accuracy is kind of having trouble moving up because once you max out your base accuracy, sort of uh, attribute for your class it's a little bit harder to find ways to upgrade it other than like alchemy so as you can see there I managed to roll two um, all balls together into a cold one which I thought was pretty cool because I never used that system I didn't even know it was a thing I guess it must have been fairly recent so I rolled two of them into a gold one I was like all right the chance didn't look very high of doing it either so I was kind of surprised I actually got that um I also did not realize you can buy obols from the shop, like the gem shop with gems that you collect in game. And there are much higher tier ones that are available. So I'm kind of wondering if I should just buy some of those and show it in a video just to like show what you can get. Cause I have no clue. Um, I have no clue if they're worth it or not. And uh, they look interesting though. So leveling up, focusing on leveling up my characters right now. I have like a bunch of my characters um, just farming different things like largely like sheeps and stuff like that um uh, my barbarian here 104 and uh it's still at the uh whatever these are called <laughs> all right take a look at the bank here it's going reasonably well i've stopped resource collecting basically i'm just training combat on like all my characters except for the fishing characters still fishing uh, mostly because I was too lazy to respec it yet. But once I once I get feeling less lazy, I will do that because I don't really need any more fishing stuff at the moment. Um, I'd like it for alchemy, but I'd kind of like to get the rate that I'm fishing at higher. So here are the uh, here's how my construction's going. It's okay. I don't really know what to compare it to. I'm sure it doesn't really compare to the people who have the uh, whatever, like all the slots unlocked and the premium cogs and stuff like that. Um... But I'm trying to upgrade things like when I can upgrade them, right? And yeah, just upgrading things whenever I log in. And it seems to be working out okay. I'm up to the Frozen Malone Tower and probably gonna go after the next tower soon. Although what I found with like some of those towers was, was that I wasn't even using them after I unlocked them because they weren't high enough level. So I don't know, maybe I'll prioritize getting the existing towers up first. Not really sure. So going in for another Chaotic Amarok takedown here, uh, just to make sure I have enough slabs, I guess. And then after this, we will try and craft the pendant and uh, see what that looks like probably. Definitely having the uh, shrines in here makes it a ton easier to do this. I didn't really need the extra defense, but I definitely needed the extra attack. That has made it way, way, way faster to do this. So. Yeah, now I can kind of reliably 
uh, farm this boss. And uh, you can see here, standing on the upper platform, his uppercut thing definitely does a lot more damage than the other attacks seem to do. I can still tank it, but uh, perhaps it's not super ideal because he started like doing this over and over again. Um, and uh, if you were a lower level, you'd probably take a lot of damage from him repeatedly doing that. <laughs> so yeah, that's probably a good reason to stay on the bottom platform unless you know you can tank his stuff. So especially if you're in melee range, that is. I, I've not tried most bosses with any other characters uh, other than my Barbarian, except for regular Amarok. Uh, I've not done even a font with any of my other characters yet. I don't think. Um, the strategy can be a little bit different for those sometimes. Just because of, you know, some of his attacks being ranged versus melee. And some classes being harder to tank things like my mages uh, having a harder time tanking things. So I think my strategies would probably be different if I were using those classes. But still, once you know the attacks, you kind of know the attacks for a lot of the bosses in Eidolon. And uh, they get a lot, lot easier once you know that and you know what you can tank and can't tank. Um, with most of the bosses in this game, it seems to just really come down to uh, understanding their attack patterns and then understanding your character's capabilities and where to stand or what to avoid based on like, you know, those variables. So uh, next one there, defeat Chaotic Amarok without like a weapon and a helmet. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's happening super soon because I really need the uh, damage currently. So <laughs> the defense I don't think would be an issue, but I would need the damage. So that is probably not doable at the moment. And there's, I don't think there's anything you unlock from that anyways. Like there's no piece of gear. So here's the pendant. And as you can see, the other materials are really easy to get. You're already going to have them by the time you can beat Chaotic Amarok. So you really only need to just beat it and get the slabs from like a couple times of beating it. So pretty easy item to get all things considered. Once you can defeat Chaotic Amarok, it's really easy to get. I can probably get more of them really, really easily. So I'll probably end up putting this on like all of my characters or a lot of them, depending on what depending on what they need, but the wisdom stat should be huge for accuracy potentially. Like, let's see how this is going to be. It has less defense maybe. Well, or about the same, maybe slightly more. Let's see what we're going to end up with. Okay, 12 defense. Granted, the Sleek Shank may have had tier two stones put on it. I can't remember. It's from not that recently. Uh, you can see though the massive um, increase in accuracy. I think that alone makes this pendant worth it over the sleek shank. Like just a massive increase in accuracy. And that is huge at this stage in the game because I don't always have the, like tons of ways to get more accuracy other than like um, alchemy, which is starting to get pretty expensive. So that's going to wrap it up for this video, I guess. So I'll leave a like if you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you thought about this video in the comments. And I uh, will see you guys in the next video.